Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jonathan Heath, and today I will be analyzing the use of the homing attack in Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic Adventure 2 is the second game to have the homing attack, and improved upon it from its previous predecessor, Sonic Adventure 1. I will be looking at the various ranges, uses, and other aspects. How the player uses the homing attack to continue his progression through the level without delaying or slowing down, or can take an alternate path while utilizing the homing attack. Let's go ahead and get started. The homing attack is used in Sonic games to encourage progression, open up new paths, and allow for quick rewards. Mastery of this mechanic will grant rewards such as extra lives. The next thing I will explain is the metrics of Sonic's homing attack. On average, Sonic can make a jump from approximately two to three square feet away. I use the tiles on the background assets of the floor and pyramid to judge and estimate Sonic's homing attack. The controls are quite simple. Press the t jump button twice to do a simple homing attack. However, if you add your directional buttons to it, you have a better chance of making the homing attack, as well as maneuver and target multiple enemies or objects in the level that are eligible to be attacked by Sonic's homing attack. Without the directional button, Sonic can make a homing attack, but the chances are decreased, as in the extra momentum forward or to the side increases the chance of Sonic making his attack. Elevation also plays a key role in the ability of Sonic making his homing attacks. If Sonic is higher than the object he is targeting, a better chance of automatically hitting the target will also be included. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the different transitions and setups the designers used. In this particular one, there's a ring box that is just before Sonic, and Sonic can use that ring box to homing attack over the bottomless pit instead of using the stairs, which is much slower. If Sonic is successful in his homing attack, a quicker and faster path opens up for him allowing him to maintain his momentum through the rest of the level. In this next example of setup, and a large group of beetles are in front of him. If the player successfully uses his homing attack to navigate between each and every beetle, he'll continue and maintain his momentum until the end of the stage. Each beetle requires a single tap of the homing attack button at a certain time, as well as a directional correction with the analog stick to make the attack. Shadow's metrics are the exact same as Sonic's in this game, but this is a great example of the use of the homing attack and without the use of the directional button. In this particular obstacle, the player continuously taps the homing attack button to gain the momentum and air needed to make it past this obstacle. The quicker the taps, the farther the character goes. The directional button is once again not needed for this particular obstacle and it's one of the few exceptions. This is a fine example of mixing the two mechanics both the large pit to fall through and each one has an electronic shield protecting it so the player must time his jump and his homing attack to make sure he does not get electrocuted and can progress forward overall the main use of the homing attack is to progress through the stage at a quick pace this is a great final example towards that sonic must use his homing attack to navigate the falling platforms into the goal to finish the stage in record time this has been my analysis of the Sonic Adventure 2 homing attack. I hope you enjoyed this time. Please have a good day.